All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome back from your break. Hope you got some water, maybe some sun, a bathroom break, no sun, air. Okay. Um, well, welcome to the last panel of this amazing conference. Uh, my name is Faye Strongen, and I'm a consultant um, in, at the ICA Group, and it is my distinct honor and pleasure to present this panel that we're calling The New-ish Kids on the Block, Reflections on the Startup Experience. And we're saying new-ish kids on the block because while these cooperative leaders may be only a few years into um, their cooperative home care journey, they certainly have been around the block and they have lots of leadership experience to share with us. Um, with our cooperative sector growing tremendously and 20 plus new home care cooperative initiatives underway across the country, um, we thought it was uh, a good time to share some insights from these leaders on what they've learned from starting and being part of new home care co-ops. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do here today. So I am moderating. I get the easy job of asking questions. Um, and so we'll, we'll have a series of questions. We'll hear from all of these folks. And then we should have time at the end for some question and answer from the audience. Um, and I would love to hear questions from, um, uh, from startup cooperators, from really experienced cooperators who maybe this, this helps you remember what it was like in your first few years, um, and from anyone in between. Um, so I'm gonna give quick introductions to our panelists and then let them introduce themselves. Um, closest to me, we have Victoria Russell from Touch of TLC in Cincinnati. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we have Pedro Maturana from the California Center for Co-op Development and Co-op Home Care. We've got Mary Claire Kalma from Courage. And last but not least, we have Kathy Rivas from Heartsong Home Care Cooperative in Washington. All right, so... Um, I guess we'll go in that order. I'm gonna come sit down with you all and okay. we'll start with some introductions. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> my name is Victoria Russell. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, my co-op is A Touch of TLC Home Health Care. Um, we were established in 2018. Um, we had actually, um, our module was already a cooperative module, um, and we were introduced to Co-op Cincy. Woo! <laughs> um, and Co-op Cincy is a hub um, of other cooperative businesses, not just based as home care businesses. So we were introduced to them in 2020. We um, signed up with the organization to be a co-op, and um, I have four three other business partners, um, Valina Bledsoe, Bettina Davis, and April Conley, um, and we are all four black women um, running. <laughs> yes, and a little bit about my background. I am actually, I've been working in corporate all my life. I'm, I've done everything in mortgage, <laughs> from processing to underwriting to closing. I'm also a notary, I do closings. Um, but my home care um, basis comes from a personal thing for me. Um, I have took care of all the elders in my family. And once they passed on, I needed to do something to fill a void of that. And so I decided to join these women and start a home care cooperative. Thank you, Victoria. Um, Pedro. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pedro Maturana and I am a cooperative developer for the California Center for Cooperative Development in Davis, California. Um, and I'm also here representing Co-op Home Care, and uh, that is the home care cooperative that's uh, being developed by the center in, in Davis, California. Um, and the co-op started in, well, I'm also filling in as an administrator. So I am the co-op's administrator for now until we um, have a, a caregiver step into that role. Um, the co-op started in 2019, and uh, I actually started working for the center in, in, 20, in the middle of 2020. 
which was the middle of the pandemic, or it was just the beginning of the pandemic. So I kind of don't want that year to, to count, like to <laughs> skip over one year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Um, and it's been lovely uh, meeting so many great uh, folks in that journey, especially the caregivers and administrators, um, because I don't have that background. My background is in uh, uh, working with co-ops and cooperative development. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, um, my experiences uh, with, with learning about the, the industry and uh, talking to caregivers and administrators and how, how much that's helped me. But yeah. That's it. <laughs> Uh, Mary Claire. Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mary Claire from the Courage Home Care Cooperative LLC from Los Angeles, California. Um, um, uh, Filipino Worker Center uh, is a nonprofit organization who, uh, who, who is the founder of this uh, cooperative and who supported Courage. Uh, since 2013, uh, in, 20, uh, in 2021, uh, Domestic uh, Democracy uh, at Work Institute supported uh, to develop our cooperate, uh, our co courage. They are the one who uh, assist us for our uh, operating uh, manual, operating agreement for our members, um, and uh, the uh, licensing like that. Uh, 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 cooperative. Our cooperative is a private pay uh, care, and we have like uh, 24 hours, 24 hours, uh, 24 seven uh, care, and uh, we have like uh, 19 caregivers. I myself too is a caregiver. Thank you. Thank you. And Kathy. Good morning. My name is Kathy Rivas, and I'm with Heartsong Home Care Cooperative in Anacortes, Washington. We incorporated back in 2018, but because life was crazy for the women who came together to do that, we didn't actually start our business and open our doors until September of 2021. Um, I was not on the original group of folks that did that incorporation. I was brought in later when everybody else had kind of dispersed. Um, I come to Heart Song with 35 years of caregiving experience, as well as miscellaneous other ventures because I can't keep my nose out of everything. <laughs> um, and I've discovered that I, when I came to this co-op, I had um, caregiver management skills and I had advocacy skills and I had taken some pre-law and I didn't have any administrator skills. So this has been the, the best, most incredible journey. Um, Northwest CDC really came um, and did all of the hard work before I got any of my nose in their business. <laughs> and so um, without them, we wouldn't be where we are. And then it's just, it's been a wild journey ever since. And we're going to talk about some of that. Thank you. Thank you all four of you. So you can already see just from these introductions, the true wealth and breadth of experience that these um, four leaders bring to the table. Um, and so we're going to get started with a first question, um, which is, what's one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you started? What's one thing that you've learned along the way that um, could have really helped you out at the beginning or just, uh, yeah, came as a surprise? Um, and we'll get started with Victoria first. Well, the main thing for me was is that, you know, you say the word, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a business. Like, it's just, you can start a business. <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, and you have the heart, you know, you want to help the people. But I think for me, if I could do it over again, I would have made sure I could start off at least one of our partners being full time admin um, office work and things of that. I would have made sure we had funding um, to be able to have someone there to do the day to day um, and also 
for like things, for example, the um, certification for public pay, for Medicaid, that costs money, you know, and things like that. So um, I think if I had to do it over again, I would have like went and applied for grants and bank money and then started. Yeah, we can just keep going down the line. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's one thing that I wish I knew from the beginning? Um, I think my initial answer to this is everything. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that's because I, you know, I, I, come, I don't come from the caregiver background. Uh, I wasn't a caregiver like a lot of the administrators that step into this role. Um, so I think one thing that's really important that I've learned along the way is uh, that uh, hard earned um, experience uh, that caregivers have. Um, and I learned that just by uh, talking to other caregivers, uh, meeting with other administrators. Um, and um, that experience just involved a lot of uh, knowing how to communicate um, and knowing how to communicate with caregivers, knowing how to communicate with clients. Um, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning a lot of that. Uh, and uh, I really get the most of, uh, of what I know now from, from, from all of you, um, from all the, all the administrators and caregivers that I've had the, the, um, the opportunity to, to speak to and who have been extremely so supportive. So I think uh, for me, it just comes down to that, that uh, experience of um, having been on the ground um, which I, you know, I'm still learning about, so, yeah. Um, in this cooper cooperative, uh, I just knew and I learned new skills. I, knew, I learned new knowledge and um, for me, uh, I learned how to get the license, permit, and uh, assist our caregivers and our members to apply for a home care registry and how to manage the business. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I learned a lot from. Yeah, I know you said to me earlier that you had been a caregiver before, you had been through that process, but now you're the one leading through other caregivers through that process, so um, that's a big transition. I myself, I'm also business, uh, the business admin. Uh, I'm uh, happy to assist uh, and support uh, our core members. That's great, thank you. I'm with Pedro, it's everything. Mm -hmm. I could go out and do the caregiving and do the 24 hour shifts and all those things, but there are so many things that happen in the back office that lift the business up and, and propel you forward. And there's constant learning and so many, many channels for learning. And you just, you have to go out and, and, and seek them out. And, and accept everything with a smile. <laughs> and I've seen that smile many times. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so I guess just picking up on this question of things you've learned, um, if any of you want to add to that, were there any big surprises along the way? Something that happened or a development in your co-op that you really didn't see coming um, and that surprised you? And we can, maybe not everyone, but if anyone wants to add to what you already offered. I think for us, we originally on our pro forma had thought that our growth would be totally different than what it was. We came from, a lot of us came from other agencies and we were thinking, oh, everybody's gonna jump ship with us and clients are gonna just flock to us and we're gonna be this wildly successful right out the gate in our first month. And that was not the case. Um, we are, our growth was so up and down and we went from anticipating 14 or 15 caregivers to having four. And we thought we would have a ton of clients and we did a month with two, I think was what we started with. And it just was not what I thought it would be and it was never what the papers thought it would be, the, the pro forma thought it would be. I have to agree with her on that. The growth is totally because you're learning um, and then you're trying to advance the business still at the same time. For example, with us applying for um, the uh, Medicaid, the, um, we have a program in Ohio called 
um, counseling on aging, and you can get a certification for passport, and that brings you the volume. But it took us two years to get that certification, and we applied for it. Um, it took two years after we applied. They even had to come back and ask us, like our insurance had expired, so we had to send in a new deck page and you know things like that. Workers' comp had, which we kept up on those things, you know. But she had to come back. By the time we were finally on the onboarding process, she had to come back and get the re, um, you know, papers that were, you know, had expired. <laughs> so you know, um, I think also like um, you know meeting with the ICA group, um, they, they prepared me for things and I didn't know in the back of my mind, now I'm saying, that's what Rwanda was talking about. You know what I mean? Like, so I think, um, you know, like I said, yeah, like you said, it's just, you know, you, you thought that you were just gonna, I'm gonna start a business, I'm gonna get these caregivers, I'm gonna get everybody to come work for me, and it's not that way. <laughs> yeah, I would second that um, you know the business plan versus reality um, <laughs> that that was very surprising and and you know I knew coming into it that there was a the, the recruitment was very challenging um, but it was far more challenging than I could have uh, I could have anticipated um, and the just the industry as a whole as well um, and um, also I think what surprised me is um, um, the how much communication uh, is really necessary um, as an administrator um, uh, communicating with caregivers when there's schedule changes communicating with clients when their needs change and just constantly constantly communicating constantly being on top of that um, um, and then just adding to the the administrative tasks um, and uh, pressures so a, a lot of it was very surprising for me um, and it's still uh, you know every day it's you know I'm, I'm anticipating something else to, <laughs> to slap me in the face and be like, no, nope. but yeah. I will add, yeah. Um, yeah. for me, the challenging one is the scheduling and the care plan mm -hmm. because um, I'm, I'm also a caregiver. Um, sometimes if, if it's hard for our um, caregiver, they are on leave or sick like that, I cover up for them mm -hmm. and it's so hard because you need, uh, the client needs, uh, you will be there. And sometimes I, I accompany or assist the client uh, in their appointments, uh, errands like that. And I pick up, uh, pick up through their med medicine, medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need to hands on on, on your business. <laughs> hands on, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. great. Um, so switching gears a little bit, I'm wondering, um, as not only home care businesses, but home care cooperatives, um, in your community, have you found that people are very familiar with the cooperative model? And how has that familiarity or the lack of familiarity um, helped or maybe created challenges for you? I don't think anybody really understands where we're from, what the concept of home care cooperative is. Um, that's one of the most asked questions is what is a co-op and why is it different? Um, and, and we really sell the team concept. And I'll say it a million times, I'm not a salesperson. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm a soft salesperson. I'm gonna tell you, this is what's on the buffet, pick what you want. And so I, I put all of the co-op golden nuggets that we heard about out on the buffet. There's, um, there's the teamwork, there's the culture, there's the inclusivity, there's the democracy, there's all of those beautiful things. And when clients say, well, what does that mean for me? I'm sending you the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. That accountability is happening for you in that person that's assisting you in another shower. And the, the level of integrity that that person is gonna have is gonna be higher because our co-op as a whole invests in every single person to that maximum level and we empower each other and we lift each other up and it, it's, just, it's the base of our business. It, it's who we are. And um, 
the other thing that I think is super important to tell people about cooperatives is that um, we own it. Yeah. And we work it like we own it. So we, I, we are the co-op difference. And in Anacortes, Washington, if you are walking down Commercial Avenue, you can tell we're the co-op difference because we say it on the side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> right. Soft marketing. Right. I love that. So it sounds like maybe there's not a lot of familiarity, but that doesn't stop you from using it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And no. it sounds like you're really smart in how you talk about it. So maybe it's not important that clients understand co-op governance, but they understand that they're getting an owner coming into their home and delivering their care. Mm -hmm. and, and we teach our people to talk about it. You know, that we talk about what we believe and who we are and what we want, and then we send the, the owners, the members out into the world and just share it, just share it. Don't recruit for me, don't market for me, just tell people about who we are and what we do and let them choose. Because they're gonna choose us 90% of the time if they know. Like you said, once they understand those terms, um, I think for us though, we kind of had um, support, co-op Sensi. So um, our full support from them, our first client was a co-op founder. Um, and <laughs> my Phil, I, you know, I took care of Phil and, you know, and I think with them, um, we have, you know, like the website and they do like, you know, workshops and stuff. So when you go to their website, you see us. So I've actually had a lot of people call me that said, I seen you on Co-op Sensi's website. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that, I think, like I said, some clients didn't know what a co-op was, but like you said, once you explain to them, I'm an owner, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give you that integrity care, you know, so I think, and, and then, you know, like with elders, they want that, they want that dependability. You know, you're not just hiring someone that has a commercial on TV and is not caring about you, you know. So I think in my situation, it wasn't as hard um, once I got the concept, like you said. And like you said, when you go into their homes, make sure you let them know, I'm an owner. I'm not just a caregiver, I'm an owner. And, and it, it made them feel very much more confident. Um, in my experience, it's been pretty mixed in Davis. Um, it's a small college town, and um, there's a food co-op, which everyone, everybody loves to go to. So when, when we mention the word co-op, they're like, oh, it's like the food co-op. I'm like, no, not really. That's a consumer co-op. It's totally different. Um, but some clients call us specifically because we're a co-op. Um, they really love that idea. Um, and other clients, they... They just want to know if we're going to take care of them. I mean, they want to know if uh, we're going to show up, um, mm -hmm. whether we're a co-op or not. And um, and I've heard from other folks that in Davis, the big agencies are very, very well established. Um, um, like, uh, I think it's Comfort Keepers has, has just had a really long history there. And, um, so I think that's what people are used to. Um, but uh, as far as... Uh, um, you know, selling the model. Um, I think we, we're always trying different things, different ways of, of uh, explaining it to both clients and caregivers. And there's always, I feel like there's mixed reviews all the time. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, I think as people get more used to the idea, um, it just makes sense and uh, uh, more people will gravitate towards it. So. Uh, in our community, we have a non-profit organization, the PWC, and there are lots of um, members, uh, like caregivers, um, and then they are like uh, curious about cooperative. When they are inquire about cooperative, uh, and I explain uh, to them that it's uh, you are a, a caregiver and you're a owner, they are very interested, mm -hmm. and and I share to them, I explain to them how it. Uh, uh, pro, uh, how the cooperative uh, begin and about the operating agreement mm -hmm. like that. And when I told them about the profit sharing and you have your own uh, decision making, mm -hmm. they are very interested. Mm -hmm. and yeah, definitely. Yeah. Having that seat at the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I share to them and yeah, that's it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds like 
um, the cooperative uh, in your community, the cooperative and the ownership is something that's really appealing and brings people in. That's great. Um, so we've heard a little bit names here and there, organizations, partners, but I'm wondering if you could tell us more about what resources or tools um, or other cooperatives have been really helpful for you in your startup journey. I could go. Um, the ICA group has been amazing. Um, let me just say that. Um, I don't know where we would be without the ICA group, so thank you so much. Um, uh, another really big resource is uh, the community. Um, there's, a, there's a group that meets, it's called the Yellow Healthy Aging Alliance, um, and it's, uh, they have a, a quarterly call, um, which was uh, over Zoom uh, during the pandemic, and it was uh, just uh, organizations that provide resources to seniors and then also private businesses. Okay. Um, they all just came together and exchanged uh, information and resources, and they have been really, really great. Um, that we have gotten so many clients through them, and they've helped us to spread the word about the cooperative. Um, so in a nutshell, the community has been amazing, uh, an amazing resource for us. Um, so yeah. I think um, the tool that uh, helped me uh, is about the, uh, the trainings and the seminars, and the, um, this one, the conference, it's mm -hmm. a big help for for me that I can share to my co-members and other uh, to our community, and uh, the seminars uh, conducted by the Democracy at Work Institute and ICA Group too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In our starting times, they support us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, we started with NWCDC. Uh, Northwest Co-op Development Center, and Deborah Craig came, I'm gonna call her out, because she's here. <laughs> she really put us together, and then ongoing assistance whenever we need it, and then of course, ICA group, we meet with Faye and um, Jonathan for the fund for Jobs Worth Owning um, weekly. They meet with us to help us keep the financial things. Um, in the very beginning, we had some startup funding that was done through the fund and through shared capital. Thanks, Mike, wherever you are back there. Yeah. And, um, and Jonathan over there. I, these, I couldn't do the back office stuff without these folks. They really have come through for us in huge ways and just supported and cheer, cheerleaders. Oh my gosh, such cheerleaders. When you think that Am I doing everything right? Are my number? What are the minimum billable numbers I need every week? Because I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not the math person. I when I worked or when I participated in uh, resident-owned communities, I sat every seat on the board, and treasurer was not the one for me. <laughs> I, so, fi good finance people are so important. Good support and cheerleading, so important. Could not have done it without you guys. Mm -hmm. And even still, looking forward to the huddle later today, just so that I know I'm on track. Um, and then, I guess beyond that, and if I talk too much, you have to tell me to stop. Um, we've been 17 months since we opened our doors. And in our community, in, in Skagit County of Washington, where half of our license is, they have a senior care providers network. And it's a bunch of senior care providers. They get together once a month and they sit around a table and they talk mm -hmm. about who they are and what they do. And I thought, that's amazing mm -hmm. to know who's out there. Because I'm not a fit for everybody. Mm -hmm. I can't provide service for every person who needs my help. Um, I, not everybody needs to be at home. That's not mm -hmm. safe for everybody. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to get what they need. And so, I thought, how can I take that into the rest of the communities that I serve? And so we pioneered a network um, similarly in Island County. And then consequently, we fused both of those networks together so that all of those people mm -hmm. um, know each other, they have resources to share, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it, it's all about really how the co-op kind of touched me, and I just want to share it. Mm -hmm. So I get to sit in a room at our very first meeting of the network that we started, and 22 people showed up. Mm -hmm. wow. 
and sat at the table with us just because of some people that we had talked to. So we go out and we share our story all the time and they come back to us and they support us, they give us referrals, they give us caregivers sometimes. Mm -hmm. it, it's really, it's become an amazing circle of how things go when you're open, when you open your heart and you do business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I was really hoping you'd talk about that. I think of Kathy as the referral and partnerships queen, <laughs> um, and I really like the way you approach it, and not um, in thinking about building a network and not as competitors. Mm -hmm. um, and especially mm -hmm. in this current environment, right, where there's a huge recruitment crisis, you kind of all need to work together. Mm -hmm. So if anyone, if if these challenges kind of speak to you, I encourage you to find Kathy and talk about how they started that network. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to share. Yes. Um, I, you know, with our support, first of all, I want to say how important it is with the startup to find support. Without support, I don't know, we, we wouldn't have made it. You know, um, like I said, once again, Co-op Sensi took us in as, our ba as their babies and, you know, guided us on things, introduced us to the ICA group. You know, because Co-op Sensi, like I said, is a bunch of cooperative businesses, different type of business, not home care. But Kristen instantly said, I'm going to get you with the ICA group. ICA group took us in as their babies, you know. Um, then you have our great organization of home care co-ops. Debbie, Terrell, like I think everyone, like they sat on the phone with me. They've got on Zoom with me. Like. I've cried to them, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's been, and not, and not even to have, you know, someone that will share their material with you. When you're in this business, it becomes competitive with the people outside the co-op. Like, I've even called other home care businesses in my area that would never talk to me. And, and I was like, what's that about? You know, we, if you're a caregiver, you're here to help the people. Why wouldn't you want to help me? You know, but I did have some that did understand that and they weren't going on a cooperative module. But also, like I said, um, friends and family, you know, they have supported me through all of this. Like my husband and my two children, they have sacrificed for me to do this and they are my biggest supports as well. You know, they have to share me. You know, I'm still, you know, I still work 40 hours a week and do this as well. So I, I'm juggling and I'm a grandmother, you know. So, you know, you have to, you know, have that support and speak to them, you know, on what you need and they, they help as well. And then my favorite one is Google. <laughs> I'll Google everything, YouTube it, you know. Yeah. Believe it or not, there is training on orientations. I know everybody in here, you know, we're all trying to get to that. And I keep speaking on this because I just did a project and, you know, I found out that a lot of us are not able to accept public pay right now. But that's our hearts. You know, those are the people who need us. So there's even videos on Google to teach you how to do the, you know, the certification processes in your state. So I, you know, believe in Google too as well as a support. So, but you know, that's, you know, like I said, it's, it's make sure you, if you're here with everyone today, connect with everyone because it is so important. It's things that, like I said, I'm, now I'm going through it, and I'm like, I heard that from Terrell. I heard that from Debbie, like, you know, so I'm like, it was in the back of my mind, but I got it now, you know? So yes, please connect with your network. I've been absolutely remiss. There's four other home co-ops home co in the state of Washington, and they're here. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't thank any of you all for all of the the Zoom calls and the just the goodness that you put out. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, I want to second that as well. I've been on the phone with uh, Deborah, Nora Edge, Kippy, yeah, Nora too, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and uh, they've helped us uh, through so many things. And mm -hmm. we really look up to the Northwest cooperatives mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, they're doing so good. Um, so yeah, big shout out to you. Yeah, there's a lot of um, community building and support that's happening behind the scenes that mm -hmm. makes us so strong when we gather here in person yes. because you all are connecting with each other um, on a regular basis. So that's really powerful. That's what Paloma said. You got friends? I said, I got plenty of friends already. I'm ready to see them in person. <laughs>
All right, so our last question, and this is my favorite one, is um, we all know that your jobs are incredibly challenging, not only the admin portion, um, but also caregiving in general. And starting a home care co-op is even harder than starting a regular home care business. So, you know, it's really hard. Um, within that, what keeps you motivated and what keeps you inspired? What, what do you hold on to in those moments that are really hard? I absolutely don't remember what I said when we talked about it, but <laughs> this minute, to me, it's um, where are we going to go from here? Mm -hmm. Where are we going to go? How many people are we going to impact? Are we going to provide service to? Are we going to give amazing jobs to? How many lives can we fulfill doing what we do? Um, I feel kind of sometimes like I'm a little bit different because my whole family works for the co-op <laughs> and we live in a resident owned co-op. So um, my two daughters are fifth generation caregivers. And when I stepped out of franchise home care into co-op home care, my thought was I have 15 or 20 years of my working life left maybe. And I want to leave an impact when I step into retirement, if I ever I, I retire, do. actually. And yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm training my future caregivers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm totally, mm -hmm. and my husband works for us. He said, I hate working at Walmart. I said, well, you know. <laughs> and he, he's an outstanding caregiver. I'm shocked and amazed, but, mm -hmm. you know, and then we just, we, we draw them in, you know, and we draw them in, we love them, we train them, and we send them out and into the world to be amazing, and they are. Mm -hmm. They never disappoint, and that's what, that, that little smile right there <laughs> keeps you going. It's the future. It's totally the future. Yes. My, um, my thing is, is that I think about where I've been to know where I'm going. Um, I think back to 2018 when I'm going to start a business, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I think about where I'm at now here in 2023, and I'm excited, and it's like you, this conference has given me a whole new soul for home care. Like, you guys have, I'm gonna go home and get on everybody's nerves. Like, you know, I'm so excited, like, of everything I've learned here, you know, and I'm so glad that I came. And also, I don't give up because everybody has poured into me. I owe them. I owe them. think about this question, I just think about the peaks and valleys that uh, I've experienced in this journey. Um, and uh, of course, when things are great, it feels great. And when things are not good, um, it doesn't feel so good. And But every new peak and valley feels a little bit uh, easier. And I feel a little bit more energized and prepared to, to take it on. So that, that's definitely something that keeps me going. Um, coming to this conference, um, meeting people like you absolutely is, is a huge part of it. I remember I, um, I was on a phone call with uh, Nora Edge and I was really ashamed and to tell her how, that we, oh, we were only able to hire like two or three caregivers and I thought that was really bad and she's like, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. yep. I was like, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <I> was, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that really, really helped me just like um, understand uh, more about my role and about uh, you know the, the uphill battle that we have, um, but also about how like how special it is that we have the support that we have um, and how unique and beautiful it is, um, and uh, that I'm really proud to be a part of it. So for me, I uh, I've been motivated and inspired of some of uh, the caregivers, sometimes they call me, oh, you have uh, like a, like a, um, uh, a hiring like that. And then I keep motivated to, to find a client, mm -hmm. to help them. And uh, of course, some of the 
caregivers, they need job. And the one thing I'm motivated that I, sh uh, I have my shift to, yeah, I love to taking care of the client and in caregiving, you need to have like, um, you're, you're compassionate mm -hmm. and you love your job and you have a big heart. And of course, uh, the, the member in our uh, co-membership and in our cooperative, we have cooperation and teamwork. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much. Can we have a big round of applause before we go into questions? I think, uh, well, before we get into questions, I guess I want to say that you all are what keeps me inspired. Like, Thank you. my job is not nearly as challenging as yours, but this whole conference and connecting with all of you here and hearing from the four of you um, about how much heart you have for this work is definitely what's going to give me the fuel to keep going. So thank you for that. Thank you, Faye. Thank you. Um, so we've got time now for questions. I hope there's some good ones out there. Um, I could see a lot of heads nodding <laughs> as these four were talking and mm's and ahs. So let's hear what you got. Yvette. Um, first of all, I want to say Me too. He works for us. <laughs> he's, he's worked for us for a little over a year now. Okay, I need some of your skills and those kind of your family members. And mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, we have six of them. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask other people to join your co op. Because one thing that co op is, they want to stand with you because there is funding and stuff out there for us. So we got to reach and grab it. We got to get it first. So as we keep expanding, we're going to get everything that we deserve. But I, once again, I want to say welcome and our doors are always open. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm going to repeat, I'm not going to repeat everything or as eloquently, but for the, um, for the recording, I'm just going to repeat the message from Yvette at HCA that welcome to the family. That's the big part. <laughs> Hello. That's a great question. I'm just going to re repeat it. Um, the question is, what's the balance of um, full-time to part-time caregivers? And when new caregiver, new member owners start out, are they often part-time and go to full-time? Or how does that work in your different co-ops? Well, we are all part-time right now. Um, we, the, right now, my, I have, um, I think, two employees and the rest of the owners we work, the, the client. So, um, it's kind of hard for us to get the two employees to full time because of scheduling reasons. Um, and then, you know, the volume that we're getting most of our clients from is from the, the um, public pay. So they may send us a referral for 15 hours here, 20 hours here, you know. So right now, um, I think the, the highest amount of hours that's being worked by one person is 30 hours. So we're almost there. <laughs> so, but yeah, we're, we're definitely part-time right now. We're a lot of uh, part-time on-call. 
Whenever I'm looking at uh, perspective, perspective owners, because I'm hiring owners that are, have a caregiving heart, um, you can't guarantee full-time hours in geriatrics. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Um, and you never know what's going to happen until it happens. And so we tell everybody, we're going to try to fill your schedule as quickly as possible. Um, people don't want to spend money on home care as a general rule. Um, so those, those big, elusive unicorn hours in clients don't happen often. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of three hours here and three hours there mm -hmm. and three hours here. Um, we want everybody working so they don't leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. We gotta draw them in. We have, we have seven at 36 hours. And then, oddly, you'll get this, you'll catch the unicorn. And to me, the unicorn is 24 seven care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, yeah. that makes my, my billable hours heart happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, I'm an administrator, so that's the mm -hmm. important part. Um, but yeah, we have, we have one 24-7 client right now, and then we have another when we go home that'll be 84 hours a week that ironically we're splitting with another agency. Mm -hmm. So we'll amazing. have three and a half days, and the other franchise agency will have three and a half days because the family wants to make sure they're covered. Okay. It could happen, and it has happened before, that this family will use both of us and will decide that co-ops are the better choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my care manager back there, Jessica, will scramble to find somebody to work those 84 <laughs> hours and how we're gonna Tetris those guys together. Yeah. So you yeah. And we do that. We work the 24 hour shifts sometimes too. So that's right. In, uh, in our carriage, uh, we do 24-7, but it's 12 hours a day shift and 12 hours night shift. We have like a two uh, regular client and uh, each client has uh, four caregivers. Okay. Yeah, and, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. and uh, sometimes uh, we have like a client just short term that's only a part time. Okay. Like a eight hour shift, sometimes Four hours, uh, four hours daily. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we um, have all part time, um, and, uh, and and that, you know, like you said, it's uh, the scheduling is super tricky. Um, it's really hard to get somebody to, uh, cons the consistent hours to work full time. Uh, we're always thinking of ways that we can keep the caregivers busy. I mean, that's one 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 of the things that we really struggle with is, you know, when when clients change their needs or. Um, uh, the, the hours aren't consistent, how do we kept, keep them engaged, how do we keep the caregivers engaged so, so they'll stay. Um, so uh, we're really trying to think creatively about that. Uh, but yeah, it's all uh, part time right now. Do we have another question? Katrina. Great. So the question is about any experience um, offering respite care services. I think we, uh, about 75% of our business comes as respite care. Mm -hmm. But to me, respite care is uh, the son and daughter, or son and or daughter, whatever, the family member takes care of mom or dad and they need a break. Mm -hmm. That's respite, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I always tell families, family caregiving is the hardest thing because mm -hmm. you can't get away from it. And I'll come and, and give you that break. I'll take that weight from your shoulders. And so, yeah, we do a lot of respite. Mm -hmm. A lot of our three hour shifts, because that's our minimum is three hours, is to go out and just send the family, you know, go, go be you, go have a break, do mm -hmm. what you need to do. 
So yeah, huge amount. Yeah, we um, actually, that's part of our marketing um, that we have been trying to get into because like you said, um, with respite is when they, like I have some that want to travel and may not want to take their loved one with them and stuff like that. So I did an assessment on one. She was actually going to the Bengals game. Who they? So, um, but she normally does. And the thing is, when they sign them into the facilities for respite, they have to do a minimum of days, like maybe 15 or 30 days. So I'm kind of like on call for her for that right now. So when they need a break, you know, mm -hmm. but like you said, it's not a consistent, you know, it's not a schedule, you know, it's when they need to um, get away or have some time to their self or, you know, travel. So um, it, it's kind of like, a, um, you know, I don't depend on it, but I, I, we do accept it, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, respite is a big part of our marketing as well. Uh, we really uh, try to put the message out that that's what we're here for. Um, and uh, every now and then we get a, a caregiver um, that who's working uh, privately with a family calling us uh, mm -hmm. because they need a break. Mm -hmm. um, and recently we actually just hired one of them that had called us like uh, a few months ago. They, they uh, went in a, in a flight. I forgot about the hiring part. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, and that's another thing. They yeah. may come work for you yeah, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's true. Um, so yeah, we, uh, that's definitely a big part of, of what we're trying to do. So uh, don't have, count it out. <laughs> uh, for us, we have uh, like um, one client, just like uh, uh, four hours per day, and the other client is like three times per week like that, just only for four hours. Yeah, we're doing that, and uh, sometimes the, the caregiver, the regular caregiver, they go to vacation, like uh, to the Philippines, like that. We offer like that too. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Any final questions? Yeah, I see one over there. Hola, quisiera preguntarles si nos pueden compartir un consejo para las cooperativas nuevas, algo que consideren fundamental para una cooperativa. Great question. So for the recording, the question is, any advice for new cooperatives? What should we do um, when we're just starting out? Meet all of the other providers that you can. If there is somebody providing senior care services in your area, reach out to them and know them and, and build that relationship and put roots in your community that are attached to your name. Because people call you when they know you're there. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to share, people will share with you. So right, so not just other co-ops, but other senior care providers building well, and, those relationships. Mm -hmm. And we always share with other co-ops. I think that's the given. But really, just to know who's out there doing what you do. And then when you need them, if you share them, 
they share you. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, just tap, in, tap, in, tap into your network uh, of friends, family, community mm -hmm. um, is really important, and especially um, organizations that are, are, have the same, are trying to serve the same population um, is really, really important. I would say one good thing, one thing is important is know, know what market you want to serve. Um, know what um, clients you're looking for. And like they said, build that relationship with that area. And also, um, just on a, on a members, because I see it's a, a y'all have a big team, which is beautiful. I'm jealous. So, But um, make sure everybody understands their role um, and that, you know, so you don't have people double working to get things done. Make sure that there's a clear understanding and make sure you always have a backup for every role. Um, I think that <laughs> is so important. Yeah. Um, for us, oh, I can share to you that um, we go to our like nonprofit, other nonprofit organization mm -hmm. uh, to have support system and go to the religious community like that. Yeah. And sometimes we go to the hospitals and ask some like managers or uh, in the administration if we can share our flyers or yeah. or our marketing yeah, marketing tools. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> I think I, I would add one last thing. One of the things that we did, have done from the very beginning is we made uh, business cards for all yeah. of our member owners. Mm -hmm. And there's our little co-op story on the back. Mm -hmm. And so when we send them out in the very beginning, I send them with a bag with our logo on it, some brochures and some cards, and I ask them to just share. Just if you're at your doctor's office, drop mm -hmm. a card. If you're in at the physical therapy office or you're walking by, leave a flyer. Mm -hmm. Don't sell anything, just share. Yeah. And it, a pen, you can leave a pen somewhere and some people will pick up a pen and look and see where it's from. It's passive marketing and it works. So that super, it's easy to do, super easy to do. Good I luck. Just, oh, <laughs> I just add from the, um, from the internal co-op as, aspect, um, consistent meetings and lots of participation. Yes. Um, you really want good decision making. Um, so always have very consistent meetings. You know, uh, democracy and decision making is a practice that you, you, you can never perfect. You just have to keep, keep going um, and be consistent. Yeah, I think we'll take just this last question. Uh -huh. At home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's their um, family member's home because they're living with their family member, but it is in home care. Hey, one day. <laughs> one day. Yes. We have, uh, we have one client, uh, she's in the facility. But it's one on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't. That, I forgot about that. Yeah, you can't go in. Yeah, and some some of them live in like assisted living, so they hire a, a companion to come in in that facility. But we don't work for the facility; we work for ourselves. And we're actually a little different. Mm -hmm. We do the in home care, and we do the care, the private care in the facility, and then we're licensed in our state to provide temporary services to facilities. Okay. So it, it, it's, a, it's a nice foundation. If you can make it work, if you can market it correctly and, and get it flowing, it's a nice foundation. We charge more money to do it because we're using our people to serve their whole facility needs. So we ask our members, are you interested in doing that? Because they come to us because they want the, the perfect job doing home care. But when there's no hours in home care, but there's temporary hours, our billable hours are still up. Okay. So it, it's a choice, and, and I never am upset with a caregiver that says, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody, because facility care is hard work, but they work for us. 
they don't work for the facility. They work for themselves. They don't work for the facility. So food for thought. Well, thank you um, to everyone out there for such a rich discussion. And if you've still got questions or um, comments or encouragement, um, I, I encourage you to find um, these fine people and continue the conversation. Um, and I think this is a perfect way to wrap up. I mean, there'll be some closing words, so this isn't it, but it, this is a perfect session to wrap up our conference because it gives us so much energy and encouragement for what is to come. And I know some of the folks sitting over here, I think we'll have you sitting up here next year. Um, so we can look forward to that. Um, and let's just close with another round of applause for our panelists. <laughs>